Bible ako na ganito because uh, Thoms- ang Thomson Chain Reference Bible is a very, very good tool para sa mga pastors and workers. And so I have been praying for that at uh, sinagot ng Panginoon after 30 plus years nung bingo lang nung nang ibinigay ng Panginoon sa akin. So, uh, praise the Lord for this and uh, I hope and pray that uh, this would be a very great help sa aking uh, study and uh, sermon and lesson preparation na ginagawa natin every week. Now, uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 78 and 79. The title of our study for this morning is Jesus Guides to the Way of Peace. As you can remember, two Sundays ago, our topic was the Way of Peace to God. Isaiah, sabi dyan, or Job, sabi dyan, acquaint yourself with Him and be at peace. The Way of Peace to God. And now, we would want to identify who is that way. Dito po, and in some other verses, we will consider this truth, that Jesus is the way to peace and that He guides to that way. Okay? Uh, let us pray first. Let us commit this study to them. In the previous Sundays, uh, the, the prophet Isaiah was so clear when he said twice, the first was in Isaiah 48, verse 22. The second was in chapter 57, verse 21. When he said, and when he quoted God, when he said, There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. Hindi lang isang beses, not just once, but twice, for emphasis. These words were recorded in the Bible. Now, since then, for 700 years, from the time of Isaiah to the birth of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, man tried to make their own way. There is this verse in chapter 59, verse 8. Sabi po ng verse, The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. For 700 years, since the time of Isaiah to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, and even, even in the years before that, man had been trying to look for other ways. Man had been trying to make his own way. But time and time and time again, man discovered that the path he makes is just crooked. That the path that man makes in, at the end of this path, there is no peace. So much so that in Proverbs 14, 12, you may be familiar with this verse, Sabi po dyan, There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Always! Man tries to make his own way, but always at the end of that way is death always. <coughs> Zechariah was 90 years old when he became a father. Uh, his wife Elizabeth was in her late 80s. At first, they did not believe when the angel made the declaration that they would become parents. And because of his unbelief, Zechariah was punished. He was not able to talk for nine months. Through the entire pregnancy of his wife, he was not able to sing lullabies to the baby in the womb. Wala. Ano kakakanta? He cannot, he cannot speak. Or well, probably he could hum, but he could not speak. He could not express his love for the unborn child. He could not even, uh, he could not even verbally make his his. Uh, is, uh, is 
description of how he loved his wife and of uh, how he loved his uh, their unborn their unborn child. Wala. But suddenly, after 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 John was born, suddenly sabi sa verse uh, 67, bumalik yung kanyang the ability to talk. And the first words that came out of his mouth was a song. This is a good testimony. You, you are silent for a few days. Ikukan mo na hindi ka muna magsalita. Sana hindi ka lalag natin. <laughs> I tried to lag natin ito. <laughs> After a few days of, uh, of, of, of being silent and then, and then you sing. Huh? Tinawag po ito Benedictus. Because that is the Latin term, Latin name, of the first two words na sinabi ni Zechariah in verse 68. Blessed be. Blessed be. Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God. Benedictus Dominus et Deus. Dominus is Lord or King. Deus is God. Blessed be the Lord God. Now, here in this in this song in verse seventy eight, Zechariah mentioned about the day spring. In the King James version, it was in small letter, but in other new modern translations, the word day spring is capitalized or starts with the capital letter D. Doesn't just talk about a an event. It is actually a person. The word they spring here is a noun. It is a proper name. It talks about the Lord Jesus Christ. It is very interesting that in this song the honor that John, that Zechariah gave was not for his son, even though John, of course, was important to him. The focus of this song was on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And if we would break these two verses down, we can identify naturally three divisions. First, we see the reason. Verse 78, first part. The reason for this day spring why the day spring came. Second, we see the occasion, second part of verse 78. The event, or the occasion. And then finally, we see the result. In verse 79, what happened, what transpired, ano epekto, when the Lord Jesus Christ came. So let us break this, that down, uh, let us look at that, and we will consider it this morning. Let us begin with the reason. Why did the day spring come? Bakit? Now here in 78, magkikita natin dito, uh, the word visited. It brings us back to... To verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. The difference between these two verses, 68 and 78. In verse 68, the person who visited is the Lord God himself. But in verse 78, the person identified there is the day spring, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And this establishes the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not just an ordinary person. He is not just an ordinary human being. He is God who became man. Pero ang tanong ganito, why? Why? Why did He come? What is the reason? Now take note the word through in verse 78. Through. Through the tender mercy. But in other translations, the word is because. And that establishes the reason why he came. Pakit dumating yung day spring. Now, let me give you 
some several verses. Let's begin with 2 Corinthians 4.4. 2 Corinthians 4.4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. The first reason why the day spring came is this. Satan has been through history been blinding the eyes, spiritual eyes of people. The devil, the God of this world, makes the spiritual eyes of people blind so that they could not see the spiritual realities, the spiritual truths taught in the Word, preached by godly men. Very clear in chapter 4 verse 4, it says, he blinded the minds of them so that they could not see the glorious gospel of Christ. One reason why the day spring came because Satan had been blinding the eyes of men. And probably you can still remember before you came to Christ you had been blind to you have been blind. You didn't see the spiritual realities. You thought once, once in your life you thought, now all that matters are material things. Probably once in your life you thought that all that matters are pleasure, worthy pleasure. This is part of the demonic deception that Satan had for the people of the world. <coughs> the God of this world that blinded the minds of them. That is the first reason. People had been under this satanic spell. Men and women had been under this demonic deception. And through the ages, there were people who failed to see the glorious light of the gospel of Christ. Siguro, dalawa kayo na nakarinig ng gospel, but only you had responded. Your friend, your other friend, did not, he or she continues to be in the darkness, spiritual darkness, that Satan had imposed upon the people of the world. Not only that, another verse, Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Look at this. That through death, he, the Lord Jesus Christ, might destroy him, Satan, that had the power of death, the devil. And we go to verse 15 and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The second reason why that this spring had come is because Satan had been holding people under the fear of death. Not only that Satan had been blinding people so that they could not see spiritual realities, Satan also had been holding them under the fear of death. At ito yung makikita natin around us. People are afraid of death. Have you considered, have you asked yourself, why is it that every time there is a coffin? <coughs> Anong sa Tagalog yun? Kabaog? Why is it that whenever there is a coffin, it is surrounded with beautiful flowers? Have you asked that? Why? Because death is ugly. There is no beauty in death. Have you asked why kailangan lagyan ng makeup yung patay? Because death is ugly. And every time we talk of death, we have friends who would say, napaka-morbid mo naman. Let's do not, let's, let us not talk about death. Pagay pa subject ang death. But actually, they are afraid of it. They are afraid of death but they are not considering where will they go after death. Sa 
Sabi natin last Sunday, sin is a poor master. But let me add to that. The devil is far more cruel master. It's not worth to serve the devil. It's not worth it. It's not worth to follow the devil. He is the most cruel master. Just look at this. This is what the devil does. Makes us blind. He holds us under the fear of death. Now, what is the reason? God in His mercy saw the pitiful, pitiful <laughs> sight of people in misery. Of people who are distressed because they are intimidated by the thought of death. God in His mercy saw people. And He acted on His mercy he sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, not only, to, not only to give us light so that we can see the realities of life, but also to defeat death and Satan on the cross so that we will not be scared anymore of death. Ito ang ginawa ni Jesus para sa atin. God acted on His mercy. God sent His Son to dispel this darkness. Because Jesus said in John, I am the light of the world. Jesus came and He is the light. Jesus came to remove the fear of death. That is what Jesus did. And whenever we go back to Lamentations 3, we always remember this. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It is because of the steadfast love of God. So look at this again, verse 17. Because the tender mercy of our God, God loved you so much, John 3, 16, He sent His only begotten Son for you. Friend, if you are here today and this is the first time that you have ever heard this. Let me, let me plead with you this morning. Please. Trust Jesus today. Have you been living in, in darkness? Have you been living in, in the fear of death? Let Jesus rescue you from darkness and from that fear of death. He came to rescue you. But you need to put your faith in Him and what He has done on the cross, on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Put your faith in Him and He will rescue you from this slavery and bondage. This is the reason why that day spring has come. Now let us consider the occasion. The word day spring, the word day spring is a precious term. It describes the rising of a heavenly star or the sun, if you if you may. The rising of a star or the sun, the dawning of the day, you may call it sunrise. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was described as the rising of a star. In Numbers 24, 17, there is this messianic prophecy concerning Jesus. Sabi po sa Numbers 24, 17, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh or near. This is still a prophecy when, when, when Moses wrote the book of Numbers. Pero look at this. There shall come a star out of Jacob. 
I have to look in other translations kung talagang yung word na star ay capitalized talaga. Baka sa King James na. Pero you know what? In other translations, tama, accurate talaga. The word star is big. Big S. And it talks about the Lord Jesus Christ. Siya ito. The star of Jacob, siya ito. The scepter that shall rise out of Israel, siya ito. A long, long time ago, during the time of Moses, it was already prophesied that Jesus will come. But you know what is more interesting? In Malachi 4.2, there is another verse, another messianic prophecy concerning him. Sabi dyan, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And he shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. The star out of Jacob and the Son of Righteousness si Jesus yun. He comes. He came. As the dawning of the day, as the sunrise, He came. And He gave light to people who were in darkness and He gave hope to people who were afraid of death. This is the occasion. The dawning of a new day. Can you please open your Bible? So Isaiah 9, titignan natin. Ano yung experience ng mga tao na nakita itong liwanag na ito? Isaiah 9. We will read verses 1 and 2 and then we will go to verse 6. Isaiah 9. Okay. This is a description of the condition, spiritual condition of the people during Isaiah's time. They're all, we can relate ourselves with these people because even un until now, ito din yung uh, situation ng mundo. Chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Ready? Begin. Nevertheless, the kingness shall not be such as was in perfection. When at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward he more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea, the Jordan, in Galilee of the nations. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. This was the experience of the people of Israel. Once they were in darkness, once they were in the shadow of death, but the great light came and it dispelled the darkness and it removed their fear of death. Brethren, friends, can we truly relate with these people? Can you say this morning, What they have experienced, I also have experienced. May I ask you now, this morning, where are you in this? Are you now in the light? Are you now living in the light of the hope that is in Jesus? Or you may say, Pastor, I am still in darkness and I am still afraid of death. Then, Consider this, Jesus has come. And Jesus has brought light. He being the light of the world. <coughs> Trust Jesus today. And He will give you light. Let us read verse 6. Ready, go. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon His shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. There in the last part of the verse, Isaiah identifies for us who Jesus is. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Is this Prince of Peace your Prince today? Is this Prince of Peace ruling in your heart today? Is this Prince of Peace sitting at the throne of your heart today? If He is, then you are sure 
of God's peace. In and through Jesus, the merciful God visits people in order to help and save them. Only Jesus saves, no one else. Only Jesus can dispel your fear and darkness in you. I was looking at the meaning of darkness in the Bible. The word darkness is used in three figurative ways. Una, darkness could speak of delusion, of blindness of heart and mind. Secondly, darkness could speak of depravity or our slavery to sin. Thirdly, darkness speaks of despondency or discouragement. Now, all of this, Jesus can remove from your heart, mind, and life. And so invite Jesus into your life because He can do it for you. When Jesus comes in the life, it would be the dawning of a new day. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. It is a dawning of a new day. When Jesus is in your heart and life, new life, new day, new purpose. That is what Jesus can do. So we identified the reason. Because of the mercies of God. We have identified the occasion that day spring has come, Sabisa verse 78. That day spring from on high has come to visit us. Let us now consider the result. What are the results? If Jesus is in your heart and life, what can you expect? What are the results? Dito po, sa 79, we see two. Two results. Sabi sa 79, To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Now, in the verse that we have read kanina, sabi dyan, the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. That is the first result. There is a great light that comes in the life of a person who has placed its trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. There would be a great light. No longer will you be in darkness. No longer will you be under the cloud of doubt and fear. Jesus has come, bringing with Him great light, and He can guide you through life. Another verse, Hebrews 2.15, Because Jesus came, He delivered them from the fear of death. Jesus delivers people from a lifetime subjectivity to bondage. What keeps you enslaved? Ano yung nakatali sa yung ayon na kadena in your life today, in your mind, in your heart? You may say, you may say, Pastor, the chains of hatred and and anger. Find my mind and heart. I find it hard to forgive. Jesus can help you break away from these chains. You may say, Pastor, the chains of lust bind my being. You know what? Jesus can, can snap those chains. He can set you free. Whatever chains of bondage hold you today, have this assurance that Jesus 
can make you free. He can. But I may add to this that the way to peace is lined with blood. It is not an easy way. You need to realize the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. This way to peace is lined with blood. Look at Hebrews 9.22. <coughs> and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Alam, alam ba ninyo? Alam ba ninyo ng pagkakaiba ng command at law? Because in the Bible, we encounter these two words, command and law. Alam ba ninyo kung pagkakaiba? Command is simply, he command, putos. But law is something different. Law calls for penalties when you fail to obey. Law requires penalty. Look at this. And almost all things that we do that violated God's law, we need to pay for it. There is a penalty on it, connected to it. Ano yung penalty? This is what verse 22 last part says. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why in the Old Testament times, people had to offer animal sacrifices. Because unless the blood of these animals would be poured out, they would not be forgiven. and people do it. Mauubos na lang yung mga animals nila because people keep on sinning. We praise the Lord for God's provision. God sent His Son to die on the cross in our stead, in our place, as our substitute. He died. He shed His blood because without Him shedding His blood, we will never be forgiven. But praise God, Jesus died on the cross. He shed His blood. And there is forgiveness for everyone who put their trust in the person and in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.20 And having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him I say, whether they be things in, in earth, or things in heaven. There is peace because the Lord Jesus Christ died for sinful men. The way of peace is a way of pardon and reconciliation. Unlike the different kinds of ways that man tried to invent, the way that Jesus provides Provided is a way of pardon and reconciliation. If you follow that way that Jesus provided, you can be sure of forgiveness. You can be sure that you will be made right with God. You will be sure of access to God because you have Jesus as your advocate. You can be sure of you being accepted by God. Because you have been adopted into His family. You can be sure of grace, of God's favor, and glory someday in heaven. He is willing to share His glory with you. You can be sure of a way of life. Of a way of happiness. Kung titignan mo yan, you will say, hindi katalo, if you will walk on the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hindi katalo. You can have this at all if you will take the way of peace. If you will trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Believers, brethren, friends, remember this. The only peace is peace in the living. 
nothing else. Peace through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Peace by walking in sweet communion with God. No God, no peace. Alamin mo ang Diyos, malalaman mo ang kapayapaan. But if there is no God, and O, if there is no God in your life, then there would be no peace. Have Jesus in your heart today. Trust Him as your Savior and Lord. And the, and the Prince of Peace will be real to you and He will give you peace. I want to end this study by asking three simple questions na sana lahat tayo we can answer in the affirmative. Lahat tayo makakasagot ng yes. Okay? Number one. Number one, have you turned from darkness to light? Sana, all of us here today would be able to answer yes. Yes, Pastor, I have already turned from darkness to light because I have recognized Jesus as my only Savior and Lord and I have placed my faith in Him. Second question, have you tasted peace with God? Have you? Yes. Sana lahat tayo are able to taste this kind of peace that God has promised. Third question. Are you living in the peace of God? Yes. I hope and pray that all of us are now living in the peace of God. And so, dear little beloved, Brethren and friends, let us continue to follow Jesus on the way of peace. Thank you, Lord, for your word, and thank you for these two verses. Thank you for Zechariah, and thank you for the day spring, the Lord Jesus Christ came, visited us because of your mercy for us. So Jesus came took our place on the cross. He died for us, paid for the penalty of our sins. He gave us light, and He guided us in the way of peace. Dear Father, we pray that You will allow these words to thrive, to grow in our hearts and minds, so that the next time when we encounter fear or doubt, we will be able to rebuke them because we know Jesus has brought us peace. We pray for our guests, our visitors here with us. Probably some of them are not yet sure of um, having peace with you. We pray that this morning they will make the important decision of putting their faith in Jesus Christ and in His finished work on the cross. Thank you once again for the privilege that we can worship you. Oh, we appreciate the beauty of Jesus, the great sunrise of our lives. He always gives sunshine to our life, to our speech, to our daily action. He is our day spring and truly he is ours and we belong to Him. And we thank you for that assurance. In His name we pray.